Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. So this is the beginning of a new module. Uh, this is the first day. Uh, we are going to work on the first week and also we are going to work on section one and two of the platform. Um, vamos a iniciar con este nuevo curso. Uh, we are going to try to uh, speak more English than Spanish, but I'm going to give you some feedback in Spanish of some of the topics that we are going to develop uh, during these four weeks, because I know that is very important for you to uh, first practice the language and also to um, make a better progress in the acquisition of the language. But also it is important that you understand what you are learning through these different sessions that we are going to develop in these four weeks. Así que vamos a tratar de hacer la mayoría de las explicaciones en inglés y luego vamos a dar un par de eh, recordatorios. Eh, las partes importantes las vamos a ir también repitiendo, ¿verdad? Un poco en español para ir entendiendo también de qué tratan algunos temas. En these kind of courses, you are going to um, see that we have a, a lot of topics that maybe you have learned uh, in the past, but also you are going to remember all the information through different feedbacks uh, or through different uh, reviews of the same topics. And also we are going to learn new things maybe in those cases. Así que vamos a hacer, um, es un proceso donde vamos a ir recordando información eh, a través de diferentes recordatorios, ¿verdad? Vamos a ir recordando eh, el uso de estos temas porque vamos a ver temas que quizás ustedes ya han visto en eh, cursos previos, eh, más que todo con, cuando son eh, temas gramaticales, ¿verdad? Eh, donde hablamos del pasado, presente, futuro y todo eso, lo vamos a ir recordando a través de la información que vamos a ir Desarrollando en este curso. The first thing that we are going to do is to know who is the person that is in front of you in this case. And my name is Elena Chavarria and I am in charge of the course. So in this case, we are going to work together in this um in this month. Uh, if you have some questions, if you need help with something, you can ask me in the sessions. Cuando estemos en las sesiones, ustedes pueden eh, hacer preguntas, ¿verdad? Que estén relacionadas a el trabajo de la plataforma, en este caso, que es como nuestra base. Eh, si hay algún ejercicio el que no le entiende, si hay un ejercicio que no se puede desarrollar, usted en la uh, sesión, usted... Me va a decir, mire, yo tengo problemas y vamos a tomarnos un poco del tiempo para resolver esas dudas. Um, I have a, a specific way in which I like to work. In this case, um, I am not going to use PowerPoint uh, presentations and I am not going to send to you a Word document. I work online. And I'm going to do it this way because um, I think it's better for you and also for me uh, because we are not going to have different documents in our devices. In this case, I'm going to send to you a link of the document in which I am working online. And you're going to have access to the information that we're going to develop during these four weeks. Así que voy a trabajar en un documento en línea, es un Google Docs, en el que um, yo voy a ir agregando todos los datos, ¿verdad?, que vayamos desarrollando a través de las semanas, a través de los días, y ustedes solo van a tener un solo link eh, al cual ustedes van a accesar. Yo les voy a mandar ese link el día jueves, que es el último día de la semana que vamos a estar trabajando, 
y ustedes ya van a ir eh, viendo cuál es la información que se va a ir agregando a esos eh, documentos. En ese caso, ustedes solo van a tener un enlace y ustedes van a entrar eh, cuando ustedes deseen y se va a estar actualizando la información de manera inmediata. So, in the case that you cannot access to the meeting because of your job, because of your activities, you can uh, use the link to see what is the topic that we were developing that day. So in that case, you're not going to miss anything uh, related to the um, the topics that we are going to develop during this month. So the first thing that we are going to do today is to see the, uh, the document because I like to share with you some phrases. In this case, we are going to have four different phrases during the module. Because I like to share with you this kind of phrases just the first day of the week, that in this case is Monday. Every Monday, you're going to have a different statement. In this case, it's like a motivational phrase or something like that that you can use in your life. So in this case, I'm going to share with you this first part, that is this one. Uh, you're going to find four different phrases like this one. And is the first image that you have on the document. And it says, in order to succeed, we must first believe that we can. La primera parte, o oh, para nosotros ser um, exitosos, o oh, para llegar a una parte donde nosotros decimos, ah, logré hacer algo que yo me propuse, es creer primero que nosotros podemos hacerlo. That is the thing. If we believe that we can do anything, we are going to do it. But if we just saying, I'm going to try to do it, it is not the best way to complete the activities that we want for our life. There are no goals for our uh, life. In this case, we need to believe in our uh, maybe... Uh, abilities to complete an action. So that is the image that I have for you and that is the phrase that I have for you. Now we are going to see what is the first topic that we are going to develop today. In this case we have this one that is called, um, in this case is how often do you exercise. It is related to this kind of physical activity in which we uh, make this performance and uh, in which we can like uh, do it because uh, we like to do some sports or maybe um, we try to be more fit or something like that. We have our reasons to do exercise, but in this case, it's very specific. It is asking us how often do you exercise? Empezamos hablando de ejercicio. En este caso, nosotros tenemos nuestras razones para hacer ejercicio, pero la pregunta es específica y nos dice qué tan seguido nosotros nos ejercitamos. But we have an adjective, and it says, In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about how often they do an activity. So, we are going to see the video. I'm going to stop this one for a moment because I'm going to share with you the conversation and also we are going to listen the um the audio. And this conversation it's called I hardly ever exercise. I hardly ever exercise. We are going to pay attention to the information that, that is presented on the video. Vamos a poner atención, vamos a ir leyendo y también escuchando el audio, ¿verdad? Para eh, que luego podamos hablar nosotros sobre qué tan seguido hacemos ejercicio. So, let's pay attention to the audio and then we are going to make like a very short discussion about this topic. Hello, we're now in section six. How often do you exercise? In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about how often they do an activity. 
pay attention to the question how often and what they use to respond. I hardly ever exercise. You're really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? Well, I almost always get up early and I lift weights for an hour. Seriously? Sure. And then I often go inline skating. Wow. How often do you exercise like that? About five times a week. What about you? Oh, I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. I guess I'm a real couch potato. In our next session, I will teach you adverbs of frequency so you can respond to how often you do a particular activity. Okay, this is the first thing. Um, we are talking about the way we do this kind of exercises, and that's why it says I hardly ever exercise. In this case, we have two different people that is talking about um, the moments in which they perform these exercises. And we have the first uh, part, and it says, you are really fit, Paul. Do you exercise a lot? That is a very uh, interesting question because she is asking if he uh, did a lot of uh, exercises and if he do it every day. So it says, do you exercise a lot? And he said, well, I almost always get up early and lift weights for an hour. He is explaining the uh, things he do during the day. That's why he is uh, really fit. And she said, seriously? Sure. And then I often go inline skating. Wow. How often do you exercise like that? Uh, about five times a week. What about you? Oh, I hardly ever exercise. I usually just watch TV in my free time. I guess I am a real coach potato. Aquí tenemos una conversación entre dos personas. Una es una persona a la que le gusta mucho hacer ejercicio y se mantiene en forma. Y la otra es una persona que casi nunca hace ejercicio y que prefiere estar en su sillón viendo la televisión. En este caso, Paul es the fit one. Y él tiene como un, um, una jornada, ¿verdad? Ya tiene como lo que hace eh, todos los días. En este caso, él dice que almost always, casi siempre, él se levanta temprano y levanta pesas por una hora. Luego, él hace este tipo de, uh, de patinaje el, que es llamado inline skating. Um, y lo hace cinco veces a la semana. Five times a week. Cinco veces a la semana. Y ella, pues, casi nunca se ejercita y usualmente está viendo la televisión en su tiempo libre. Y usa una, una palabra que es I am a real couch potato. What do you think is couch potato? Have you ever listened to that expression? ¿Alguna vez han escuchado esa expresión de I am a real couch potato o just the word couch potato? ¿Hay alguien que haya escuchado esa, esa frase antes? ¿Si ¿Sí saben qué significa? Let's see, I have an answer here. It's What like is... a lazy. Ah, it's someone that is very lazy. Very good, Ingrid. Es una persona que es perezosa. That is a coach potato. Es como, si lo traducimos literalmente al español, es como decir una papa aplastada, ¿verdad? But that is not the, the meaning. Es alguien perezoso, ¿verdad? Que prefiere pasar su tiempo, así como lo hace Mary, que es um, laying on the sofa and watching TV. But it is like, valid sometimes we, because we feel very tired and we prefer to do this kind of, of activity. But we cannot say that is the, the best thing. We can maybe make some exercise sometimes because it's good for our health. It is not like we're going to be um, like uh, Paul sometimes and go exercises five days a week. So it is not that thing. So this is the first uh, conversation that we have on the platform and it is related to exercise. Now, 
this topic is kind of uh we can make an union uh with the topic of the adverse of frequency so in this case we are going to remember what are the adverse of frequency that we uh, learned in the past and we are going to paint um we are going to put into practice the information that we have about the adverse of frequency Vamos a recordarnos de algunos adverbios de frecuencia que ya hemos eh, utilizado en el pasado. Tal vez ya los hemos visto, no conocemos algunos. But we are going to make some statements. We are going to make some sentences using the adverb of frequency. But don't worry. It is not like we are going to apply all the adverb of frequency. In this case, we are going to answer the question, how often do you exercise? Vamos a contestar la pregunta. ¿Qué tan seguido ustedes se ejercitan? I'm going to give you time to think about the, the statement and you are going to write your sentence on the chat. Vamos a empezar con la forma escrita. Me van a poner en el chat la respuesta a esa pregunta. ¿Qué tan seguido ustedes se ejercitan? Así que vamos a tratar de poner nuestra respuesta. You can say like, I exercise twice a week. I always exercise in the morning. I don't like to exercise. I never exercise. Whatever answer you can give. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes and you are going to give me your answer. Tienen aproximadamente tres o cuatro minutos para pensar su respuesta. Lo vamos poniendo en el chat. Yo luego voy a ir poniendo las oraciones en el documento. So, let's begin. We have three or four minutes to complete this exercise. Okay, we have a lot of um, answers right now, so I'm going to begin writing some of the uh, 
a statement that you wrote on the chat. So if we have um, almost the same statement, we're not going to write it because it is like, we're going to have a lot of statements that are really the same thing. So we're going to have just the, uh, the general examples. So in this case, we're going to begin with this one. Example. I'm going to do it like a list. And I'm going to use the stars. Here we have the statements. It says, I hardly ever exercise. I hardly ever exercise. Then we have, I never exercise. Then we have, I usually exercise once a week. Okay. I usually exercise once a week. Mm -hmm. Next one, I exercise twice or three times. I mean once. Uh, twice or three times a week, okay. Two or three times a week. Very good. Next one. I usually exercise one hour a day. I usually exercise one hour a day. In this case, when we are using uh, the adverbs, it is like not uh, necessary to use the verb to be. I am always or I am usually. In this case, you're just going to use the adverb to uh, write your statement. I hardly ever exercise because in my free time, I play with my son. Exercise because in my free time, I play with my son. But that one is considered like an exercise because you need to, to um, use a lot of uh, energy to play with your son. So in that case, you are doing a different kind of exercise, but it is uh, considered an exercise. Sometimes I exercise, um, we are going to change. I sometimes exercise. Mm, one day a week, like this, it's better. I walk 20 minutes a day, oh, excellent. I walk 20 minutes a day. I always exercise in the morning. Ah, oh, very good. I always exercise in the morning. Then we have, I never do exercise, but we have um, the same uh, uh, statement. So we are not going to write again uh, the same thing. I exercise two or three times a week. We have another one that is exactly the same. I exercise in the morning. We're going to write here because uh, this one, it, it is not always like the, the other example. I exercise in the morning. Next one, I never do exercise. We have another that is the same. I never exercise. I do exercise every day in the morning. 
Uh, we have like always exercise in the morning. I exercise two days a week. Once a week, we have another that is once a week. Yes, uh, I exercise three times a week in the morning. Mm, we are going to write this one. I exercise three times a week in the morning. Okay. I never exercise. I like to watch videos and cook. Oh, very good. I never exercise. I like to watch videos and cook. Okay. I never exercise. I work all day. That is the same history of my life. I work uh, the whole day and also in the night. So I think I don't have enough time to do all the activities that I I like to do because I don't have enough time for all the activities that I have to do during the day. So I need like 30, 35 hours a day and it is not possible. I walk every day. I exercise in the morning all week. Oh, very good. I never exercise. Again, I never exercise. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thanks for the participation. It's very important for uh, us to participate in the activities. So in this case, we have different uh, phrases and you are using the adverb of frequency that is very important in this case. Tenemos diferentes oraciones eh, que eh, nos dejan ver el uso de los adverbios, que es la próxima parte que vamos a ver, que es el tema número dos. Eh, estamos utilizando hardly ever, never, usually, eh, sometimes, always, que son parte de los adverb of frequency. Pero vamos a ahondar un poco más sobre este tema. So we are going to see more about the adverb of frequency and we are going to remember the whole thing because we have a list of words that we are going to use in, in this case that are the adverbs of frequency, what are the uses and in which cases we are going to use every of these adverbs of frequency. And one more thing, you need to, to know that in this case, the adverb of frequency have a percentage because they are talking about um, how often do we something. So in this case, we have these um, examples, but now we are going to see more about the, um, the adverb of frequency. Vamos a ver más sobre los adverbios de frecuencia y cómo es que nosotros los vamos a aplicar, ¿verdad? Um, but in this case, it's related also with questions because we have an objective in this case. So I'm going to write the objective for the topic number two. And in this case, uh, I mean, first is the topic, but let me use this one and this one. So we have the topic that is adverse of frequency. And we have the objective. And the objective said that by the end of this session, you will learn how to ask and answer questions using adverb of frequency. Básicamente, lo que nosotros necesitamos hacer es cómo preguntar y cómo responder a estas preguntas utilizando los adverbios. Pero para eso vamos a dar un pequeño recorrido sobre los adverbios y cómo utilizarlos Y ya luego hablamos un poco de las preguntas. So, we know that the adverb of frequency tell us how often something happens. 
That is the first thing that we need to know about the adverbs. La información general es que los adverbios de frecuencia nos dicen a nosotros qué tan seguido sucede una acción. Y vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. So, in this case, we have with the word always, and it says, Peter is always getting into trouble. Why we're using this kind of structure? Because we are saying that someone is doing an action. Aquí estamos diciendo, ¿verdad? Que Peter siempre se está metiendo en problemas o siempre eh, está metido en problemas. So in that case, we are going to use this structure because we are talking about the action that Peter is doing in this case. Then we have usually... They usually get their work done on time. They're usually get their job, or in this case, their work done on time. Uh, Miss, disculpe. Tell me. Cita. Eh... Usted esté, no sé si solo yo, ¿verdad? Pero está escribiendo como en la parte de abajo que no se visualiza bien. Ok, let me do it. Like this. Gracias. Exacto. You're welcome. Gracias. You're welcome. Ok. Now, we have another one. Frequently, in this case, we can use, we can use this kind of words. They are not like... Um, it's not very common to see this kind of words on the table because you're going to see um, that in some cases when you look for the advert of frequency, you're going to use uh, always, almost always, uh, usually, uh, um, we have like seldom, we have never, we have rarely, but in this case, we cannot like use this kind of words. They are not like very common on this kind of table, but we have frequently. Frequently, and in this case, it's talking that my sister frequently goes shopping in Seattle. Frecuentemente, ¿verdad? Este, en este caso es frecuentemente. Mi hermana frecuentemente va a comprar a Seattle. Ella va a, a, a esa ciudad, ¿verdad? Es como algo que ella hace bastante veces. Pero no todo el tiempo. Then we have rarely. They rarely ask questions about the homework. Raramente, ellos preguntan acerca de la tarea. That is the meaning in this case, because uh, we are using different uh, words, um, but we are not going to see the percentage because we have like uh, different images when you are like searching on internet in which you can find um, this kind of tables in which you have a uh, um, a number, the word, um, an example. In this case, not because you are like, it is supposed that you have seen this topic before. So in this case, we're just making like a review of this topic. So in this case, we are not going to have that table 
in this document, but you can look for the image and the information and you can like make some comparison between the information that you have. What are the most common adverb of frequency? Vamos a ver cuáles son los más comunes. In this case, we're going to make another list. So, you know that this is the number one. Always is like, uh, an adverb that is very used when we are making a statement. And we have an example. He always does his homework. El siempre hace su tarea. Next one, usually. They usually complete They work on time. Ellos siempre completan su tarea. I mean, ellos usualmente completan su tarea a tiempo. O su, tra su trabajo. Often. I often watch movies online. Sometimes In this case, we have Jack sometimes come over for dinner. Then we have occasionally. Come over is like to come late. In which one? And sometimes come over, comes over is, is like to say always um, comes late. No, in this case, it's like to uh, stay in a place. Él es como, es como decir, a veces viene a la casa a comer. Comes over es como llegar a ese lugar y, y llegar a comer a ese lugar. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Give me a second. Okay, then we have occasionally, and we have this example. She occasionally asks a question. En ocasiones, ¿verdad? En algún momento ella hace preguntas, pero no es algo que lo haga todo el tiempo. I mean, questions, plural. Okay. Then we have rarely. They rarely have any homework. And the last one, never. 
I never complain at work. So in this case, we have some of the um, the adverb of frequency that we are going to use when we have a conversation. And in this case, it's also related to the things that we are going to use when we are like explaining something. Um, in some cases, we can use this word without thinking about the meaning of them because we already know what are they like trying to refer when we are talking about an action. And also, um, we have like positive and negative uh, adverb of frequency. In this case, it is not related to, to the bad actions. It is related to uh, the frequency. In this case, when you are using the adverbs that um, refers to almost always, always, usually, often, sometimes, in that case, you are uh, talking about that you are performing something. But when you are using uh, adverbs like uh, maybe occasionally, rarely, uh, when you are uh, also using seldom, never, they have a negative connotation. Tenemos como esa escala del negativo y el positivo y no tiene nada que ver con el uso del don't, del, del can't, nada de eso. Y tampoco tiene que ver con acciones, si son buenas o son malas. En este caso se refiere a eh, la frecuencia en la que nosotros hacemos las cosas y dependiendo de qué tan alta sea la frecuencia, o sea, de cuántas veces hacemos nosotros la acción, a, a eso se le conoce como positivo, si lo hacemos todos los días, a veces, pero lleva como eh, un porcentaje del 50 para arriba, es positivo. Si es del 50 para abajo, es negativo, aunque la acción que estemos realizando sea buena o la acción que estemos realizando sea mala. Pero no tiene nada que ver con eso, sino con el porcentaje de, eh, de la frecuencia en la que realizamos una acción. Por ejemplo, I always smoke Uh, two cigarettes. Siempre fumo dos cigarrillos. Sabemos que la acción está mala. Pero como estamos utilizando always y el porcentaje es el que nosotros nos dice que es un porcentaje bueno. No la acción, sino el porcentaje. In that case, it is related to, to the percentage, not the action that we are performing in that moment. Now, the important part here. ¿Cuál es la parte importante? Decíamos questions. So now we're going to see uh, some information about the questions and some examples about those questions. So let's see. How can we create these questions using uh, the adverb of frequency? So in this case, when we, we are using the adverbs, In this case, when we're using the adverbs or when we are creating questions, we're going to put the adverb before the main verb. So in this case, we have the following structure. We have the auxiliary verb plus the subject plus the adverb plus the main verb plus the complement and the question mark. Esa es la estructura que vamos a utilizar para hacer preguntas con los adverbs of frequency. First, we are going to use a a auxiliary verb. In this case, we are going to use do. Then we are going to use the subject. In this case, we already know that we have the different subjects in English. We have I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. That are the persons that we have in English. 
Then, we are going to write the adverb. Vamos a escribir cualquiera de los adverbios que ya hemos estudiado. Then, we are going to have a member. That is the action that we are performing in this statement. Then, we are going to write a complement. And at the end, that is like uh, something you are, you are going to do. In this case, like... Um, Always, but this part on the statement is the question mark. That is the important part here. Ahí sí tenemos que recordar de escribir la question mark o la, eh, el signo de interrogación al final de nuestra oración, que es como la parte importantísima que no tenemos que olvidar. En este caso, because uh, we are talking about English, we are just going to use one of these uh, symbols because in Spanish we have two, but in this case in English we have just one. So, we're going to see some examples. Let me move this one a little bit here. So, in this case, we have the following statements. In the first one, as I said, we are going to use the auxiliary do. The first thing is the auxiliary do. Then we're going to use the subject. In this case, I'm going to use you. Do you. Now I have my adverb. In this case, I'm going to use often. Do you often. Now my verb go. And my compliment to the cinema. Do you often go to the cinema? And we have the question mark. Now, another one. We have here, in this case, we're going to use the auxiliary in past. The in. In this case, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use he. Did he sometimes leave, I mean, leave the classroom? Now, another one. Do they usually come late to class? Now, in this case, we're not going to use the auxiliaries, um, but we're going to use also WH questions. In this case, we're going to make like, um, we're going to make like different kind of questions. Vamos a hacer como diferentes eh, tipos de, de preguntas, no solo con auxiliares, sino también con las WH words que eh, son como de las más frecuentes, ¿verdad? De las que más utilizamos también para hacer preguntas. Así que voy a agregar otros ejemplos por acá para que veamos cómo quedan también estas preguntas con las WH words. In this case, I'm going to begin with what, but I'm going to like move this one to this space because we are going to make the difference between the WH questions and the auxiliary words question. In this case, we have, what do you sell them to when you are in English class? In this case, when you are using sell them, it's something that you are not going to do a lot of times. Es a lo que menos hacemos. Cuando utilizamos seldom es de las cosas que menos hacemos. 
Entonces, en este caso es, ¿qué es lo que menos hacemos? Tal vez cuando estamos en una clase de inglés. Then, eh, what do you often do when you are in a class uh, or an English class? Then, what kinds of movies do you never watch? What kind of movies do you never watch? What do you sometimes eat for breakfast? What do you... It's for breakfast. Now, we're going to use the verb to be questions. Vamos a utilizar también las que llevan el verbo to be al principio. In this case, we have, are you always tired in the mornings? Are you always tired in the afternoons? Or in this case, we can change afternoon for evenings. Like it's very this way. Another kind of question that we can ask is, what do you often do on weekends? What kind of, what kind of food do you really eat? So, in this case, we have different kind of questions. Tenemos acá diferentes tipos de preguntas, no solo las que llevan el auxiliar, sino también tenemos por acá preguntas con las WH words y también tenemos preguntas con el verbo to be al principio. If you can see, in this case, we don't have the, um, the adverbs just at the beginning. We can find some of the adverb almost at the end of the question because uh, we are like uh, looking for the main verb. And in this case, remember that you are going to write the adverb um, like before the main verb. En este caso, vamos a escribir lo que es el, el adverbio antes de nuestra acción, antes de nuestro verbo. Entonces, es por eso que a veces aparece el adverbio antes eh, del de verbo, por eso está al principio, en medio o al final. That is not like we have a specific structure in which we say that uh, we are just going to write the adverb just at the beginning of the statement. En ese caso tenemos que no siempre lo vamos a poner al principio. That is like the main thing. So, in this case, we have these two topics that we um, are developing right now. Uh, we have like a couple of minutes, so we are going to like uh, talk something about the, the this one. So um, you can begin working on the platform right now and you can like um, perform all the activities that you want. And this is, I think that you already do something like this. Uh, because this is not the first time, I guess. So you're going to work on the platform and you can uh, work on all the activities that you want. And if you have questions about the activities or the statements or something that you are not understanding, 
you can like ask in the session for like some clarifications. And another thing that um I just want to say, eh, a partir de mañana, lo más seguro es que yo me esté conectando cinco minutos antes de la hora, cinco minutos antes de las ocho, para que podamos terminar la sesión a las siete cincuenta y cinco, porque yo luego tengo, I mean, Yes, 8.55, no 7.55. Me voy a conectar a las 7.55 para terminar a las 8.55 porque yo inmediatamente después de ustedes tengo otro grupo. Tengo otro grupo a las 9. Entonces, hoy inmediatamente termine con ustedes, empiezo con el otro grupo. So, eh, así que a partir de mañana, tal vez, eh, los que no puedan conectarse a las 7.55, don't worry, that is not like uh, you are going to be at that time. It's because um I have another group uh, after this uh, session. So that's why I'm going to do it like this. But you can access to the meeting at the hour that you are available. Um, because I know that you have a lot of things to do. So in this case, um, you are going to access and I'm, I'm going to stay here for you. And I'm going to explain all the topics that um, we are going to develop during this um, this month. And also, we are going to clarify some of the exercises that we have on the platform. In some cases, we are going to uh, make like a research. No, it's not like a research. It's like a review of the exercise. Oh, no, don't worry. In this case, I was saying um, at the beginning that if you cannot access to the meeting on time or if you have some uh, things to do, I'm going to send to you the link of the document. Para los que no estuvieron al inicio, les comentaba que si ustedes no pueden accesar a la, a la sesión a tiempo, eh, sí, en este caso, eh, básicamente, si usted está por ahí y hay alguna actividad, usted puede comentar y ahí está, es parte de, de su trabajo. Entonces, todos aquellos que participan en las actividades, por eso es que la participación es muy importante. Todos aquellos que participan, pues ustedes saben que ahí ya se les va contando, ¿verdad? También lo de la participación. En este caso, usted pues eh, tuvo problemas, pero ya lo está notificando de que tuvo problemas para entrar. Así que, don't worry. Eh, si no pueden accesar, uh, se les va a enviar el enlace del documento. Eso lo voy a hacer hasta el día jueves. Y ustedes pueden ir viendo los temas que se van desarrollando porque se van a actualizar en este documento que tienen en pantalla y ustedes pueden entrar a la hora que ustedes lo deseen para revisar un poco sobre los temas e ir practicando o ir eh, reforzando un poco la información. Vamos a ir de menos a más. Um, Today is like um, to know what is the, the thing about this uh, course, but we're going to have more activities in the other sessions. We are going to have like some exercises, some practice, all of the things, because um, it is important for you to begin talking and producing the language. And that's why I'm going to serve for you different activities that are not like part of the the platform, but I like to uh, bring some activities that you can perform during the session. So uh, we're going to do things like this. Um, yes, you are. Don't worry. If you are in the session, you are going to see the um the attendance. In this case, I'm not like telling your name but you are going to be on the meeting so don't worry en este caso yo no les voy a pasar lista así que no se preocupen pero sí es importante que ustedes participen porque ahí sí se va notando lo de las participaciones so I think yes it's time to end the session uh, because I have the other group so we are going to end here and we are going to see each other tomorrow so have a really good night and see you tomorrow on the next session. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.
Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.